another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing and this time we're going to be taking you and showing you the secret carp bait. It's deadly. Boy is it deadly. Do you know what it is? It's so complicated. It is b -b 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 bread. That's right. Bread. But this is one of my best catching baits. I was shocked. I went into a tackle shop and it's not very often I go into a tackle shop mind and I saw a little packet like this no bigger than this. It, it had some little, I don't know what they were, like pellets in it. Nearly four pounds. It was this big. My sandwiches were bigger than that. These you can pick up for 40 or 50 pence for a whole loaf in a supermarket. And of course, it's that cheap you can actually afford to throw some in. And if you throw some in, you're going to get a lot of fish on it. This one is something different you might not have seen before. And you're going to go, what the hell is that? Mm -mm. Doesn't look good. Plain, simple, boiled rice. Why would I use boiled rice? Well, if I'm at a commercial carp fishery where they use it on white maggots, when you boil up rice, it looks like mm, white maggots. Much, much cheaper. Fish love it. We eat it. No reason why the fish shouldn't eat it. But it all adds up and it bulks out. You see, it bulks out the feed as well. Plus, the extra resistance. A sack of bran. Obviously, I do not throw in a sack of bran, but the tiny particles of bran they all break up, they're very, very fine, together with the rice, they help to attract in the small fish, and then once they start feeding, it feeds them off and it leaves the bread there, the big pieces of bread, for the carp. And I'm gonna be fishing really, really big pieces of bread. I'm gonna take Mike with me as well, give him a crack at this. I don't think he's done any, uh, any ledgering with bread before. Fishing very close in, probably used by alarms, just give them to Mike so that he's aware of how fast some of these carp take. Boy, they really take off when they hit these at these baits and I'm going to be link ledgering I'll show you how I mix a bait up first check it out it doesn't matter what bread you use we find the cheaper is just as good as the expensive go in the supermarket and look for their discount section you can sometimes get three loaves for about one pound sliced or uncut it doesn't make any difference. But uncut bread makes a better hook bait or floating crust. We use dry bran to bulk it out, an agricultural animal feed, cheap to buy from a feed supplier. A little goes a long way, plus it feeds all the small roach. And then, what about cooked rice? Those grains look just like a small white maggot, and that's what a lot of match anglers throw in, so the carp are used to seeing that size and shape. Well, to mix it all up, I like to do it really before I go, it saves a lot of uh, gunkiness. A bucket of water, a washing up bowl. We put it down, come along, take notice, follow me. Now come around here, we're in the totally awesome workshop. Get your pen and paper out and take, take notes on this. Old school always works. Okay, I'm going to put the mix into here, but I'm going to dip the bread in there first. So if I actually just sop the bread in there, I just pick up a few slices of bread and I dip it in and then take it straight out, almost, what's that, 15 seconds? Look, it's all dripping and yucky, I'll show you. Now that's been in there 15 seconds and yeah, yucky, yucky, yucky. It's not very nice, is it? But there you go. I'm trying to get it broken up into fairly big chunks. If you put it huh, everywhere, if you put it into the water and leave it in, it's just going to go to absolute mush. You'll end up with soup. You want chunky bits, and those are the bits that the carp kind of come and feed on. Well, I've got a good mix there. You can see, absolutely, almost a washing up bowl, three quarters full of white, quite chunky particles. I've still got pieces this big. Now, if you get some thick crust, the ends of the bread, you're gonna have to soak those a bit longer to get them to sog up. So the next step is you wanna put a bit of a bran in there as well, like this. So get some bran. That goes in the mix as well. 
and this helps feed off this well it basically what it does look it attracts a small fish to start and then it sort of feeds them off they'll be nibbling at the big pieces of bread but they can't really get it down their neck you know say so break it up and all that activity does attract the carp no question of that so let's get that out of the way you can see how far this brand goes it goes miles and then i'm going to strain off some of this a bit more water in there and i'm going to mi mishmash all this up all into one so i've got a really good mix there and because i'm doing it at home you know what you can also do you can also freeze this in your freezer this mix get it frozen down I'll tell, tell you what else you can do if you want to do a real bulk session like this say a couple of three washing up bowlfuls you can freeze this down you can bag it tag it and freeze it put it in the freezer and you've got it all ready to go just remember to give it a good 24 hours to thaw out otherwise you'll be throwing it in blocks of ice that's no good you want it to sink straight away so you can have a real good mixing session back at home stay clean wash up before you go fishing and then always all you do is just throw it when you go fishing so that's all mixed up nicely there. If I want to stiffen it, throw it further, I use this, and this is really good for stiffening it up. Ready brick? Ready brick? Yeah, ready brick does really gluey, as does porridge oats. So I'm not going to put it in this mix because we're going to be fishing close in, but if I did want it to bind up, you can see it's like a real fine powder there, and it does go nice and gluey, and it tends to stick it together. You can get little balls you can either catapult it out but don't over wet it if you want to go further out you want to bait up further out don't over wet up put a little bit in there just a fancy it so ready brick for binding or any porridge oats like that porridge oats is a bit fine a bit a bit chunkier the ready brick is quite fine so it's a good binding agent ready brick of course is available from the supermarket so there we are we're nearly done i'm going to leave this to soak a bit longer and then what we do as well is i I used to use the, the uncut stuff for the hook bait because it's really chunky and fluffy and you can squeeze that down onto a hook and it will still expand up and make a really, really big bait. Little ones don't nibble at it, big ones do. I think it's time to go down the lake now. I've got to have a good old wash up. Let's get down and see if we can't catch my, one or two fish on this. And we're starting in the afternoon, by the way, guys. We are not at some secret place. We're at day ticket water. It's going to be Watmore Farm Fishery. They've got a match on there, so I'm hoping the match is not going to put the fish off too much, and I'm hoping we can winkle something out. As we say here at Terribly Awesome, fingers crossed. Well, they're crossed now because I'm mixing all this rubbish up. Right, now you've seen all that lovely mix of bread, and that's been soaking for a good few hours there. Now I'm going to be fishing, not a distance, I'm going to be fishing just down here, about, I bet I'm not more than 11 or 12 feet out, and you can get little handfuls of this stuff, it's nice and sloppy, so it breaks up on the impact with the water, and I'm going to get some in the water, and it, the brown particles are going to come off first, then I'm going to scatter some rice over it, and then these big pieces of flake, those big pieces I hope are what the carp are going to come for. So I'm just going to throw it just out from that, going to throw it out from that little branch sticking out, that bit of overgrown stuff. I could go further and then I'd have to put that ready brick with it to make it stiffer. So I've put in quite a bit in, so I want to get it going. Okay now already within 10 minutes of us doing this little bit of filming, there's millions of little fry that are coming up, they're taking the particles of brown off the surface and that's going to attract the carp to come in and the bigger roach. So now I'm going to put the rice in, which is here, all the boiled rice. Again, if you fish this with maggots, you know, it's really, really good. Could be another episode for you. Throw this in loose and this will get the roach going as well. It also helps feed off the roach. You know, you get them coming in feeding and as they get all the activity in the water, then that will draw the carp in. And once the carp come in, they'll actually shoulder these roach out of the way. And this stuff is so cheap, boiled rice. Harmless, cheap, easy, just use the gas on it and that's it. Right, off the tackle. Right, for tackle, same old, same old, totally awesome. Small fixed ball reel, five, six pound line, Avon rod. Terminal tackle on the end, if you haven't seen it on one of our other films, it's the link ledger. It just slides up and down like that, that's all it is, but I've shortened it right up to about a three inch drop with the big SSG, 
and a flying gaff. Now, it's a number four carp hook, so it's a big carp hook, barbless, and I'm gonna be using regular uncut bread because it's better inside. Don't let it dry out in the sun. If you can, put a very damp towel over it and cover it with a towel, you know, if you're in a hot, sunny position. Pull out a good gob of bread, and I mean a good gob of bread. Fold the hook into it. Now, I'd squeeze the hook here. It looks like I'm probably crushing it all, but the hook point is just there, it's just clear. So I give a little nip there, that crushes it up, and a little squeeze here, and that should fluff up in the water to about this size. And there's only one thing that's going to eat that, and that's a carp. Let's get it in the water and see if we can't get a few bites. No long casting required. Just toss a big chunk of bread flake out over your baited area, say about 20 feet. Right, so it's pretty slicked off. There's a little bit of ripple here, but it's hard to sink the line when you're close. So what I do is I wind everything up to the tip then, put most of the line onto the reel, get some washing up liquid. I've got a little film canister here. Just put a little bit of washing up liquid on the reel, like, like that, and that will cut through the surface tension of the film of the water, and you'll be able to sink it straight away. Okay, I'm now gonna put it into the bite alarm, and I like to ring the line with the ring just this side of it. So I'll show you there. That's better, and you can hear it's just there. Get it dead square, and then I use these bits of plastic spine out of books, which are my favorite, because they weigh absolutely nothing, and they help visually for me to see it. There, it'll bob up or down. And also, I like this angle from here to here by putting the rod ring here. If I had it further back, the rod line from here would be shallow. Look, it's not, sometimes it might error, it's missing the wheel. So if you put that bob in so it's an acute angle. Oh, there was a bite, I felt it in my fingers. Just there, and just tension up to it, and then come back up the other end. I'm watching this all the time. Back to the reel, turn the reel spool, and then you can tighten up and just lift this bobbin off the floor so you can see a drop back bite. <laughs> we, that was one take, guys. That was absolutely one take. <laughs> this is totally awesome. All right. Just trying to show people how to fish, and we've got one on. I'll tell you what, I think it might be a bream or what it is. It's going well for bream, whatever it is. I was just about to show you how to tension up on the reel spool, and I did mention early on I just felt a little take there. By the time I got back to where the reel spool was, I think I still think that's a bream, I'm not sure. Now that one, as you can see, was not put off by a, almost a one inch diameter, the size of a 50p piece of bread. I'm not saying it's not gonna ping off, it might do. But we'll never get a better chance of showing you how fast those fish can take. Here we come. It's a common, and get in there, boy. <laughs> oh, lovely, jubbly, lovely, jubbly. Don't tell me that bread doesn't work, guys. I've only put it in the water for about 30 seconds. Let's look at him on the mat. I'll tell you what, even while I think that was good, I don't think it might work. You know why? Because it was in his swim that we were doing the little test on the bobbins. I'll tell you what, I don't know who's more pleased. Me or Mike, because that little test tape we were doing showing you about the bobbins was in Mike's swim. I love it. Sorry about that, Mike. I'm sure we'll get another one. Let's get it back. So what we were trying to show you just now before we had that carp, and I hope it happens again, is you can adjust the bobbin like this to just raise it off the ground. Don't use a real handle, because sometimes a revolution in the weight of the handle pulls it down and pulls it too far. That means you've got to bump it back to get tight and you've actually pulled the bait out of the swim. So it's best just to adjust it here. And if you look down the other end, you will see the bobbins there. I slackened it back like this, it's on the ground, just like this, so I'm not gonna see a drop back bite. If I tighten up on the spool, I get it just where I want it. I'm just gonna test it. Yeah, I can feel it's tight. Just about there's where you want it. 
the four inches. So you've got audible and visual and luck. Right guys, well I was just nodding off. We had the, Dad had that carp earlier um, while we were filming, so that wasn't staged at all. And uh, we've had a rebait up, we've baited up about two or three times since then. And uh, I'm onto one here, my first one at Watmore Farm, and it looks like quite, quite a decent one actually. It's definitely, they do definitely fight better. They here. go well, don't yeah. they? They do go well. Digging and digging. Like. Yeah, this looks like quite nice. Right, well he's come close about two or three times now and he's stripped me out again. They are really good scrappers over here. And he's, they dig deep with their tails. You think they're coming in close, he goes to net and they'll be straight out, don't be fooled by them. Straight out again. And he's taking me all over the shot, this one. He's digging for the snags here. Yeah. He's stripping more line out. They know where the snags are. There he goes. Oh, he's going for it big time. Going for that bush. Is he clear now? Yeah. Yes, yeah, like six plus, or I'd say. Come, but it looks like a common. Notice how many anglers are not on the bank. That's right. We start fishing when all the others have gone home. Easy. Easy. Oh, nice one. Yeah, yes, nice one. fish. That's a better fish. Sure. Mat time. There we go. <sighs> Nice healthy fish. Oh, I'll tell you fish. what, yeah, that's uh, seven pounds or even maybe at least. maybe an eight, that one. All right, guys, there we go. About seven and a half, eight pounds. If I get them up for you. Absolutely gutted it. The bread definitely works. No need for these complicated baits. Just simple, basic bread. Fish, fish number two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good show. Let's get him get back in the water. figured out there's so many roach here now that they've actually taken that big flake and breaking it all down quickly. Jesus Christ, I got two on at once. <laughs> oh no. This happened once before when I've got two fish on there. One well, I could nearly lost the rod, that's Mike's rod in the side there. This one is and I don't want to say to the third fish on, but I've got such a cluster here, it's oh, fucking it get slipped out. Stripped out here. That's it, I'm down to the stub. Look, I'll give you a show you. I took a spare reel for Mike to fish. I'm absolutely shafted. I'm down to the stub now. I'm in real trouble. This one's got plenty of line. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and get this one back on. Hang on. Oh, Jesus. Well, I tell you what, guys, don't ever use bread the totally awesome way because you get two good carp on at the same time. It's just, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have to give this rod to Mike. We'll have to start filming, mate, because I'm going to get spooled yeah. out again. Yeah, okay. I've got a few yards back on this one. You take mine, I'll All take right. this other rod. Okay. Right guys, got a little common here, small one, that the one that Dad actually hooked while he was talking to you. So I'm gonna try and get this one in as quick as possible because we reckon the one he's got on there is a better fish. But it's absolute carnage. He got spooled by that fish and he nearly broke off at the bottom of the spool. And he's filming at the same he's time. Filming while and there is just the truth is the fish I've got left with a bit of line. So we've got two fish on the same time. Oh, oh he's taking me around the bushes. Look. Going around the bush, I'm trying to film, I can't whine. What a place. Don't come to this Watmore farm, there's too many fish. Ridiculous fishing. You got yours, Mike? Okay, I'll get you to take the camera when you got that one sorted. Yeah. 
I'll try and film backwards at the same time. There we go. It's like a production line here, guys. It is, yeah. And do you know what? I don't even think they started feeding yet. There we go. It's one gone. Right. Ow, I'm going to get bust out. There, you take the camera, it's running. Yep. Right, see if I can get this, any life out of this one. Because it's way out. I don't know if you can actually see. I was totally spooled out one step. Ah, oh, he's come off. He's come off because I was talking. But there you go, he's put me right down the edge. At least we had two on at the same time. No, he just pulled off. Look, there's a hook. That's what barbless hooks are for. <laughs> <laughs> You can see how the bread and brown ground bait mix breaks up and showers down to the lake bed. The carp soon find it, and once they start digging in the bottom, you know you are going to get a confident bite. Then the rice can go in over the top, and looks just like a bed of white maggots. As basic as it seems, bread flake attracts the small fish straight away, even the roach fry of that first spawning season. They feed on the tiny particles, and while they may be too small to take your hook bait, they do attract the attention of any passing carp. The bigger fish will soon move in on a free feed and shoulder those small fry out of the way. And of course, those small fry will love the tiny brown particles. It's a sort of fishing nuclear plant. Your ground bait is just causing the reactions. Well guys, we caught those four carp, but people ask us why we go fishing. I have to say, it is the fish obviously, but just look at this setting. The water's stilled off here, and this is a biggish lake. You rarely see it with not a breath of wind. It's absolutely beautiful out there. We've caught carp. It's almost a sort of so what, we got lucky. But what a setting, and this is why you guys go fishing. You know, I was waxing lyrical just now about the lovely, beautiful setting. That's all I really came for. No way. This is what I came for. I nearly lost a rod out of the rest just then. Every time we put a fresh chunk of bread out there, I would suggest it's oh, it's barely, barely two minutes before we get slammed. I mean, they are really hitting it. These are what we call single toners. And when they go on the oh, when they go on the bobbin, you don't even see the bobbin move, it's just crack, you hear the crack and bee single tone is a good fish. I'm being very, very naughty and lazy by sitting down and fighting it. And it's a good fish. Now this is a pound and a quarter test curve rod, a barbel rod. I won't say who it's made by, it's jet black. It's brand spanking new. This is only the first or second fish on it. But do you know what, I just don't like it because it's a nice modern rod, fine, but I use those old ones and they're lighter for their size. This one feels top heavy. It's okay, it's probably gonna catch this fish, I hope, but sorry, this mate, don't really like it, don't really like it. Stick to the old stuff. Here comes a fish. This one is going and going and going and going and going. It stopped. It's on that rod that I don't like, that I'm suddenly starting to like. 
Oh, fish, fish, fish. No. Fish dip. <laughs> Cleared the lid out. <laughs> it's frantic, that's for sure. Oh, it took a lot of line off me. And another fat one bites. What can we make a title of this? The bread basket. That's a lovely fish, you know, it's a lovely fish, lovely looking fish. I feel there might be a couple more to come. Not bad considering we didn't start till three o'clock in the afternoon. Our old school ways are still paying off in the shape of fish in the net. Easy, cheap, and the way to go for beginners and youngsters. You could say, it's totally awesome. We had a little quiet spell, and back on again. What a bit of surface activity, small stuff, you know, that are dimpling on the surface now. It's a beautiful evening. And this one does not feel a bad old fish at all. All this action, people, on a few loaves of bread out of the supermarket and some boiled rice. Oh, come on. I hope he doesn't take me in the snakes. He's kiting right in under these trees. He's already been up one side, he's been right down the snake there. That's what makes me think he might be a bigger fish and he knows his way around. No, he's turned and gone out again. Oh yes, oh yes. This is a better one. This is definitely a better fish. He says looking for the net which is always left somewhere else. I've got to watch a drag on this. I mean, oh. He's digging and digging. I don't want him taking me too far out in the water, but the benefit here is it's nice and deep, this ex-gravel pit this is, nice and deep, so hopefully he doesn't... Oh, it's a good fish, you know, it's a good fish. Digging and digging. Unbelievable fight here at Watmore Farm Fishery. I have no idea whether they're on steroids or what. You'd think they're like 18 or 20 pound fish the way they're going. It's just weird, they just scrap and scrap. And he's still going. Nice peculiar, common I think. I've actually noticed, I don't know if you guys who do a lot of carp fishing notes, I think the commons fight harder than the mirror. So I just got that feeling when I look back over the years that actually you do get a better scrap out of a common carp. Here he comes. Oh, that's quite a nice fish. I don't think it's as big as Mike's, but he's, he's certainly got a lot of stamina. Still won't give up. Ah. And you know what the saying is? He is totally toast. He's just not a big fish, I can't believe it. It's weird how they fight like that. I mean, that's weird that fish didn't fight hard. It's what, six pounds? It's only about six pounds, but when you look at the size of this tail, look at that. That's why it gave me such a good scrap. Huge tail on it. Come in number eight. 
your time is up.